Hey church family, this is Andrew. I'm sitting outside of the church building and uh, just wanted to, to share with you guys some thoughts about what happened 2,000 years ago on this Tuesday before the events of Easter. What happened in Jesus' life? What was he doing? What was he saying? And uh, today is a beautiful day. It's peaceful here. But 2,000 years ago, this day was anything but peaceful. It was a day for Jesus that was full of avoiding traps and teaching his disciples. And the day, it started at a town called Bethany. It was a town two miles from Jerusalem. And Jesus and his disciples, they, they wake up and they, they walk to Jerusalem. And on the way, they noticed a fig tree that Jesus actually had cursed and withered the day before. And Jesus teaches them about faith. Um, and uh, when they reach Jerusalem, then they enter into the temple. And the day just gets super busy for Jesus. Immediately when he gets there, he begins to be asked questions from the religious leaders where they're trying to trap him into saying things or doing things that would uh, put him in a bad light in the people's eyes. They begin looking for ways to arrest him. They ask him about, hey, Jesus, by whose authority do you do these things? Do you teach these things? And he turns it back on them. They ask him a question about, hey, where's your allegiance lie? Is it in God or is it in Caesar? They ask him about, hey, Jesus, what's going to happen uh, at the end times when we, when we as believers rise again? They, and they try to trip him up in all these things, try to, to ridicule him for different things. And one Pharisee comes up and famously asks him, hey, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And in all of these questions, they're trying to trip him up and trap him and get him to stumble. But we see Jesus totally in control. Every answer is masterful. In fact, every answer seems to turn the tables and trap those who are trying to trap Jesus. And they finally just give up. They stop questioning him. And throughout this whole thing, Jesus is telling parables, warning against the way the Pharisees are living. In fact, Jesus, after they stop asking him questions, he goes into this long uh, talk where he's giving warnings about the Pharisees, where he says, hey, they're like hypocrites. They, they're they like cups that are clean on the outside, but dirty on the inside. They're unfit to be drank out of there. They're like whitewashed tombs, where on the outside they're magnificent and clean and glorious, but on the inside, they're full of death. And he points to the fact that they they boast themselves up while oppressing others and putting down the poor and the widows. And they love self-exaltation and honor and respect from people. Yet they're not living faithfully to God. And it's in the midst of this, Jesus says, Hey, the greatest among you is your servant. And that those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. And I think we can learn a lot from this. Because if we're not careful, you and I, can't we easily become like the religious leaders of the day? I mean, it's so easy to point the finger at them and say, why why would you do that? Why would you say that? How dare you be like that? But isn't it easy for us to become the same thing? To push ourselves up while we push others down? To look at the outside, to judge people by that rather than by the inside? I think we can learn a lot from these warnings that Jesus gives. Jesus then turns to a woman in the temple and points to her. It's a widow woman, a poor widow woman, who goes up to the temple treasury and gives in two little copper coins compared to all the religious leaders who have just given out of their their wealth and their boasting and everyone's seeing how much they've given. And she humbly, almost secretly, just goes up and just pops them in. Two little coins. And Jesus says, look at her. She has given more than anyone else. And it's because she gave, not out of all the lavished blessings and wealth that she had, but she gave out of a humble, faithful heart. A heart that loves God. At this moment, Jesus and his disciples then leave the temple. And they go up to a place called the Mount of Olives, where Jesus begins to give what's called his Olivet Discourse. Or basically, a a speech he gives on the Mount of Olives. And this is the last thing that happens that day uh, that's recorded for us. And Jesus begins telling parables and things about um, the end times, the last things. And the, the last things, end times, 
can be things that breed a lot of fear within people. They can cause us certainly to ask a lot of questions of when and where and how. But in the midst of all of these things that Jesus says, these parables, he says this. He says, you might hear rumors of wars and disease and all these things. But he says, see to it that you're not alarmed. Basically, don't be afraid when you hear about these things. Don't, be succ- don't succumb and be swept up in anxiety and fear over these last things. Jesus never tells us to be afraid of those things. And during the season, we need to be reminded of that. That whether today is the last day or whether Jesus is going to return in a thousand years, whenever it is, we don't need to be alarmed. We shouldn't be afraid. Now, we should be aware and we should be ready. Jesus tells his disciples that through a number of things, through some parables. We need to be aware that Jesus is going to come. He will return someday. We should be ready for that. And I think a, a big part of being ready for that is just learning how to live like the poor widow woman, how the poor widow woman lived. She lived humbly and sacrificially. She loved God. She didn't love self-exaltation. She wasn't boastful and proud like the Pharisees, but she was living for the Lord. And when we do that, we don't need to be alarmed about the last things. When we do that, life is just better. When we put the the last things in God's court and say, you know what, you're in control, God. I'm just going to faithfully, humbly live for you now and forever. So church family, I want to encourage you. To learn from these lessons from that day 2,000 years ago. To not be like the Pharisees. To not boast ourselves up. Let's not worry about the end things. Let's trust in the Lord. He's in control. Just like he was in control with the questions the Pharisees were asking him. He knew all the answers. He has it all in his hands. Let's faithfully and humbly live like the poor widow woman.